Uh, can you hear me? Uh, so uh, uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this conference. And uh, uh, so uh, I'm going to present uh, some results on uh, uh, three-dimensional uh, Hamiltonian with topological quantum order. Uh, and uh, this is a joint work with uh, Ren Wang Ha, who is here. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so our final goal here is to uh, to build a, a, a quantum memory. Uh, so we would like to store. Uh, <coughs> well, we would like to to build some device that can uh, uh, store a quantum states uh, in the presence of uh, thermal noise and uh, small uh, imperfection, like hardware imperfection. And uh, as we all uh, know, uh, a quantum state recorded uh, in a noisy device will quickly uh, degrade uh, unless we uh, perform some form of uh, error correction. Uh, and uh, uh, so I would like to focus on uh, self-correcting memories. Uh, and uh, this is a system in which uh, uh, error correction is uh, imitated by uh, natural low temperature dynamics. And uh, uh, a user of such memory uh, uh, would need uh, to perform active error correction only uh, once at the final readout step. But uh, the storage uh, itself does not require any action from the user. Uh, and uh, I will uh, 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 restrict myself to uh, quantum memories based on uh, topological uh, stabilizer codes. Uh, uh, and uh, well, the famous example is the two-dimensional Satori code. Uh, uh, and uh, topological memories uh, <coughs> uh, provide, uh, always provide us uh, protection against, against local imperfections, such as small local perturbations. Uh, so the only thing that we need to worry about is uh, protection against uh, thermal noise, which is a good thing. Uh, but uh, um, unfortunately, uh, it, is, uh, well, it is strongly believed that uh, two-dimensional topological memories uh, uh, do not offer protection, do not have uh, thermal stability. Um, and uh, uh, well, uh, as we heard from Hector's uh, talk, uh, excitations of two-dimensional uh, 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 topological models are always anions. And uh, uh, the problem is that uh, thermal fluctuations can uh, easily create pairs of anions from the ground state. Uh, and uh, even worse, uh, thermal fluctuations can easily uh, move anions. Um, and uh, as anion moves, it leaves uh, a, trails, a trail of errors behind. And uh, after some constant uh, time, uh, the uh, well, uh, accumulated uh, energy will exceed the error threshold, uh, and uh, but uh, uh, we can tolerate, and uh, uh, we will lose our encoded state. Uh, and uh, for example, uh, this intuition has been rigorously confirmed by Alitsky, Fanes, and Horodetsky, and uh, they showed that uh, memory time of the two-dimensional story code is uh, a constant independent of the lattice size. Uh, and uh, so uh, a conclusion that we can draw from these uh, results uh, is that uh, we need some um, uh, mechanism to uh, uh, to restrict uh, mobility of anions in order to have uh, quantum self-correction. Uh, uh, and uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, 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 I will talk about uh, uh, certain three-dimensional, uh, 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 well, three-dimensional topological, uh, and uh, in particular, I will be interested in the uh, uh, three-dimensional code that uh, Zheng Wang uh, showed us uh, in the morning session. And uh, this code has a nice property that uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, mobility of anions is restricted in a very dramatic way, so that local errors can only move anions some constant distance uh, away. Uh, and uh, uh, so the question that uh, we would like to, uh, uh, I would like to address is, uh, uh, whether this uh, uh, type of models have uh, uh, self-correcting properties, and uh, if so, uh, how long can we store uh, quantum information in such memories? Okay, <coughs> uh, I think I will skip it. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, a, a user of any memory must be able to uh, uh, write, store, and uh, read information. 
and uh, I will need to spend some time explaining to you uh, uh, how exactly the model uh, these steps. <coughs> uh, and so let's start from uh, encoding. Uh, uh, and uh, I will consider a memory system defined on some uh, uh, d-dimensional uh, lattice of qubits. Uh, I will be most interested in d equals three. Uh, and uh, uh, so given any stabilizer code, uh, we can define uh, a memory Hamiltonian H, <coughs> and it is essentially just minus sum of uh, stabilizer generators for the chosen code. <coughs> uh, uh, so uh, 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 the ground state subspace of the memory Hamiltonian coincides with uh, the logical <coughs> subspace uh, of our code. Uh, and uh, uh, I will always assume that the ground state energy is uh, zero. Uh, and uh, uh, every violated stabilizer costs uh, uh, one energy. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, and uh, uh, so uh, so far there is nothing topological on this slide, but uh, uh, well, I have to explain what I mean by topological codes. Uh, and I mean uh, two things. First of all, uh, this, uh, uh, this stabilizer generators must be uh, geometrically local. So each uh, generator at, uh, acts on uh, a few qubits that are located uh, close to each other. And uh, secondly, I, I mean that uh, the distance of this code must uh, grow as uh, some positive uh, power of the lattice size. Um, and uh, uh, for most uh, examples that we know, uh, the distance actually grows uh, linearly with the lattice size. <coughs> Uh, and uh, uh, the example that will be most important for me is uh, uh, the uh, uh, qubit code discovered by Zheng Wang. Uh, and uh, just in case you missed the morning session, let me show it again. Uh, so we have uh, uh, two qubits uh, at every side of the lattice, uh, and uh, uh, stabilizer generators live on uh, uh, a unit cubes. Uh, there are uh, generators of type Z and generators of type uh, X. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, if you want to have some uh, logical qubits, uh, the lattice must have uh, periodic boundary conditions along x, y, and z uh, axis. Uh, <coughs> and uh, uh, a nice property of this uh, code is that, uh, well, first of all, uh, uh, it is topological. Uh, the distance grows uh, at least uh, linearly with the lattice size. Uh, uh, but uh, a remarkable property uh, is that uh, uh, this code has no logical string-like operators. Uh, uh, that will be very important for, for my talk. <coughs> uh, okay, let me go to this. Now, uh, uh, now I have to describe uh, how the model the storage of information. Uh, and uh, for that we need to uh, set up some uh, dynamics that uh, uh, drives the system towards the uh, uh, towards the thermal equilibrium state. Uh, and uh, uh, to make our life easier, I will assume that uh, this dynamics is uh, Markovian. Uh, and uh, it is well known that the most general Markovian uh, dynamics consistent, consistent with uh, quantum mechanics is uh, this uh, Lindblad equation. Uh, they have unitary evolution uh, under the memory Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, uh, they have some uh, uh, Lindblad generator uh, that describes uh, dissipation uh, of energy. Uh, and uh, this, uh, this Lindblad generator involves uh, a bunch of uh, quantum jump operators. <coughs> and uh, uh, this evolution starts at time t equals zero uh, with some uh, ground state uh, of the memory Hamiltonian. Uh, and uh, this ground state is our uh, encoded uh, state that we want to, uh, to store. Uh, and uh, I will uh, impose some natural uh, 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 locality uh, constraints. So all, uh, all quantum jump operators uh, must be local and they must have a bounded norm. Uh, and, okay. <coughs> uh, uh, suppose now that uh, our memory system uh, uh, interacts with uh, uh, some thermal buff, which is kept at uh, some constant temperature at T. <coughs> uh, uh, well, in general, uh, if we consider reduced dynamics of the memory system, it uh, will not be Markovian. <coughs> uh, uh, but uh, 
uh, uh, well, uh, it turns out that we can uh, uh, well approximate this uh, dynamics by uh, Markovian one using uh, so-called Davis uh, the decoupling limit. Uh, <coughs> so we start from uh, uh, choosing uh, a bunch of local operators, uh, A sub k, uh, through which uh, our memory system can uh, couple uh, to the bar. Uh, for example, uh, this, could, uh, this could be uh, uh, the set of all single qubit uh, power operators. <coughs> uh, uh, and then <coughs> uh, we use these coupling operators to form uh, the uh, dissipative part of the Wimbus equation using uh, this rule. Uh, so uh, uh, you can see that uh, quantum jump operators have uh, uh, two indices, uh, k and omega, uh, and index k tells us uh, 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 basically which uh, coupling operators, which, of which interaction gave rise to this uh, quantum jump operator. And uh, index uh, omega uh, tells us uh, how much uh, energy uh, has been transferred from the system uh, to the bar. And uh, there is a uh, uh, coefficient uh, R of omega, which is uh, basically the uh, spectral, uh, spectral density of uh, the noise. Uh, Okay, and uh, uh, this uh, spectral density uh, must uh, 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 obey the detailed balance condition. Uh, uh, and uh, it is shown here. Uh, so basically it says that uh, fluctuations, increasing, uh, uh, fluctuations increasing energy of the system are exponentially sub uh, at low temperature. Uh, and uh, this detailed balance condition is uh, the only uh, well, the only uh, place in our model that uh, depends on uh, on the bar temperature. Uh, uh, now, uh, uh, suppose we have evolved uh, our system uh, according to this Wimbus equation for some time t, uh, and now we want to uh, retrieve encoded information. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, the decoding step. Uh, and uh, well, this is uh, very standard. Uh, we uh, perform syndrome measurements, and then we, uh, we do error correction. Uh, and uh, error correction is just some algorithm that uh, takes as input the syndrome and tells us which correcting power operator we need uh, to apply. <coughs> uh, and uh, okay, so. Uh <coughs> Uh, uh, it was not uh, obvious at all how to choose this uh, error correction algorithm uh, for the qubit code. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, we spent, well, we spent several months trying different uh, heuristics. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, we have uh, found something that works uh, reasonably well. And uh, so let me try to explain you how our algorithm works. Uh, okay, let me move on to this. So we call it a uh, uh, renormalization group decoder uh, uh, because uh, uh, well, this algorithm uses uh, real space uh, renormalization methods to process the syndrome. Uh, and uh, 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 so uh, conceptually, it's very similar to error correction algorithm uh, uh, found by uh, Jim Harrington in his PhD thesis, uh, although technically it's uh, uh, a bit different. Uh, so let me. <coughs> Uh, let me explain how our algorithm works. So, so we start from uh, our measured syndrome, and uh, I will represent syndromes using uh, pictures uh, like that. So this uh, big rectangle uh, represents uh, our lattice, and uh, for simplicity, uh, I will show pictures uh, for two-dimensional geometry. And uh, these uh, red squares uh, indicate uh, uh, locations at which uh <coughs> Uh, stabilizers have been flipped uh, as a result of the error. So these are locations where uh, syndrome is uh, non-trivial. <coughs> uh, uh, so, uh <coughs> okay, so, uh, so uh, the first step uh, of the algorithm is to uh, uh, find uh, connected uh, clusters of this uh, uh, defect. <coughs> uh, and um, so precise definition of connectivity is not so important this point, but uh, uh, basically uh, 
we say that a cluster of defects is uh, connected if we can uh, walk across the cl cluster uh, without uh, jumping uh, more than one unit of length at a time. <coughs> uh, for example, uh, here we would have uh, uh, five uh, connected clusters. Like this is a single cluster and uh, these are uh, four other clusters. <coughs> uh, then uh, for each of these clusters we uh, must do certain uh, subroutines. <coughs> uh, first we uh, find the minimum rectangular box that encloses this cluster. Uh, uh, let's call this uh, box uh, B of C. Uh, and they are shown by this dashed uh, lines. Uh, uh, and then uh, for each cluster we try to uh, annihilate it by applying some Pauli operator uh, supported inside of this uh, enclosing box. Uh, and uh, uh, if we succeed we watch the annihilation operator that was used. Uh, so we apply this procedure to every cluster and uh, 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 let's assume that for the sake of argument that uh, we successfully uh, annihilated this cluster. Uh, but uh, we cannot annihilate uh, the remaining one. <coughs> uh, then uh, what we have to do is to uh, uh, increase our unit of length uh, by a factor of two uh, and uh, come back uh, to the first set. Uh, so uh, now our initial syndrome is uh, like this, uh, but our unit of length uh, now is two. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> it means that uh, uh, these two defects would uh, qualify as uh, a connected cluster. And the same is for this pair. So we have only two connected clusters. Uh, then again, <coughs> we find this uh, smallest uh, enclosing box uh, and try to annihilate clusters by acting uh, inside this uh, enclosing box. And uh, well, suppose uh, that we successfully annihilated all the defects. <coughs> uh, <coughs> and uh, so since we uh, annihilated all the defects, it means <coughs> that uh, uh, the accumulated uh, annihilation uh, operator uh, is uh, consistent uh, with the absurd syndrome. And uh, so our decoder uh, does, uh, well, we choose this accumulated uh, annihilation operator as the correcting operator uh, uh, and uh, what we need to apply. <coughs> Now, uh, uh, there are two ways in which this uh, decoder could fail. Uh, first of all, it could happen that uh, 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 our unit of length become uh, comparable with the lattice size, but we still have some defects left, so we cannot move forward. And uh, in this case, we just uh, declare a failure. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, another way for, for the decoder to fail is that uh, it uh, successfully annihilates uh, all defects uh, but uh, the correcting operator uh, 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 does not return the system to the original state. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, we, uh, we introduced a logical error into our memory. <coughs> and uh, okay, uh, it's also important that uh, all these steps can be uh, implemented uh, very efficiently. <coughs> uh, and uh, so, uh <coughs> So our main goal is uh, to, uh, to analyze this uh, quantity that uh, I call storage error. So we start from uh, arbitrary initial ground state of the memory Hamiltonian. Uh, we uh, evolve it for time t, uh, uh, Lindbergh equation. Uh, and uh, at the end of the day, we perform uh, the, uh, 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 our decoder. And then we uh, uh, compare, we look at the difference between uh, our initial state and our final uh, uh, decoded state. <coughs> so if a memory is good, uh, this uh, uh, storage error must be uh, very small. <coughs> uh, and uh, so this is uh, our main result. Uh, uh, so it gives uh, 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 upper bound uh, on this uh, storage error for the uh, uh, three-dimensional qubit code uh, that I told you. <coughs> And uh, you can see that uh, it grows uh, linearly with time, uh, which is not very surprising. Uh, but uh, what is important is that uh, uh <coughs> the storage error uh, uh, decays uh, polynomially uh, with the lattice size. Uh, at least uh, uh, it decays for sufficiently small temperature.
recall that beta is uh, inverse temperature uh, of the bulb. <coughs> uh, uh, so, uh, well, uh, it shows that uh, this code indeed uh, has some self-correcting properties. Uh, as we increase our letter size, the, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 the memory become, uh, becomes more and more reliable. But unfortunately, we cannot increase letter uh, size uh, too much. Uh, so there is uh, some uh, uh, there is some critical letter size L star, uh, uh, which is exponential in the inverse temperature, uh, and this bound applies only if uh, we do not exceed uh, this critical size. <coughs> uh, now uh, we can easily uh, translate this bound on the storage error to uh, bound on the memory time. Say uh, we could set some uh, uh, error, uh, some uh, <coughs> uh, small error epsilon that we, we are willing to iterate, and uh, then uh, the memory time uh, uh, grows uh, polynomially with the lattice size, and the degree of the polynomial is proportional to beta. Uh, <coughs> now, uh, if uh, uh, if we fix uh, some temperature, we can ask uh, what is the uh, maximum memory time we can obtain by. Uh, choosing the optimal uh, lattice size. Well, and uh, it's pretty obvious that uh, we should try to choose uh, uh, the lattice size uh, uh, sorry, uh, like this. <coughs> uh, and uh, then the uh, uh, maximum memory time would be exponential in uh, beta square. <coughs> and so uh, <coughs> it's not infinite, uh, it's uh, some constant, but it's, uh, it grows uh, extremely fast as a function of uh, beta. <coughs> uh, now, uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, this theorem only gives us uh, uh, a lower bound on the memory time. And uh, a natural question is uh, whether uh, this bound is tight. Uh, and um, <coughs> also we would like to, uh, to know uh, uh, exact values of these uh, coefficients uh, in our bound. <coughs> Uh, and uh, in order to do that, we performed uh, uh, numerical simulations. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> uh, of course, we cannot uh, compute uh, this storage error numerically, but uh, what we can do is uh, to use um, uh, Monte Carlo method to estimate uh, this quantity, uh, P of T, which is uh, uh, the probability of uh, uh, successful dec decoding if we evolve the system uh, for some time T. <coughs> Uh, and uh, <coughs> so what we observed in the numerics is that uh, uh, this probability decays uh, exponentially uh, this uh, uh, time. And there is some characteristic uh, time scale tau, uh, which uh, we have chosen as uh, our numerical estimate uh, of uh, uh, the memory time. <coughs> and uh, so these are our results. Uh, so. Uh, the horizontal axis is a uh, uh, linear size of the lattice, uh, and uh, vertical axis is uh, uh, memory time in a logarithmic uh, scale. And uh, so here I've shown uh, data for uh, uh, six different uh, temperatures. Uh, so uh, let's see, so uh, this is the uh, uh, largest temperature, uh, smallest beta, and uh, this is the uh, smallest uh, temperature, or uh, largest beta. <coughs> And uh, you can see that if we uh, fix a temperature and start increasing uh, uh, lattice size, uh, the memory time uh, 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 grows uh, because this is log scale. Uh, but then we have uh, a saturation uh, at some, uh, there is some optimal lattice size uh, such that if we go further, uh, the memory time actually uh, becomes worse. <coughs> uh, and uh, so it's more or less consistent with what our, uh, well, our theory predicts. And uh, so uh, on this inset, I show uh, how uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, uh, degree of this polynomial uh, depends on beta. Uh, and uh, well it's, uh, 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 you can see that it's roughly a linear function of beta, and uh, it is also consistent with uh, uh, our theorem. Uh, and uh, uh, on this inset, uh, uh, you can see how uh, the optimal uh, lattice size uh, depends on beta. So more precisely, this is a logarithm of the optimal lattice size. And uh, so uh, uh, it's consistent with uh, our predictions that 
uh, with uh, L-status exponential in beta. Uh, <coughs> uh, now, uh, uh, we can uh, also test, we can use this data to test our second prediction that uh, the uh, maximum uh, uh, maximum memory time at a fixed temperature grows exponentially with uh, beta squared. <coughs> Uh, uh, unfortunately, we can only explore a, a relatively small range of temperatures, uh, but uh, <coughs> uh, so here we have uh, beta in this temperature, which is uh, log of the uh, maximum memory time. And uh, uh, well, if our theory is uh, uh, correct, then uh, this curve must be uh, uh, quadratic. Uh <coughs> uh, and well, it's uh, hard to say from this. Uh, plot whether it is really quadratic, but uh, <coughs> so if we use, uh, so this all uh, uh, errors that we get uh, using a quadratic feed and uh, a linear feed. Uh, and uh, you can see that uh, well using linear feed uh, gives you a systematic error and uh, quadratic feed works uh, much better. So it's also roughly uh, consistent uh, with our theory. <coughs> and uh, now I would like to uh, to sketch how we actually prove uh, this bound. <coughs> uh, but uh, I will first need to introduce some terminology. <coughs> uh, so, uh, uh, so basically we have, uh, we can think about uh, this uh, thermal noise as a kind of non-standard error model. Uh, and uh, we would like to characterize, uh, we would like to understand which errors uh, are likely to be generated uh, in this error model. Uh, and uh, uh, it turns out that a very useful uh, 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 quantity to think about it is uh, energy barrier of uh, an error. <coughs> so if we have some Pauli operator P, uh, uh, we consider uh, all possible uh, uh, <coughs> uh, all, uh, all possible error path that can uh, uh, generate this uh, operator. And uh, error path is just uh, a sequence of uh, single qubit uh, errors. Now, uh, 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 if we apply this uh, error path uh, to the initial ground state, we obtain uh, some sequence of intermediate syndromes. Uh, and uh, at each step, we count how many uh, defects uh, we have. <coughs> Recall that defects are just uh, violated stabilizers. <coughs> and uh, 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 energy barrier of a Pauli operator is uh, the, uh, the minimum number of defects that we need to implement uh, such operator by a sequence of single qubit errors. Uh, say, uh, uh, so th this Pauli operator would have energy barrier uh, uh, at most four, uh, because we have one error path uh, that requires only four defects. And it is at least three, because uh, uh, this operator itself creates uh, three defects from the vacuum. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, 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 basic intuition is that <coughs> uh, uh, thermal noise is uh, uh, can only generate uh, errors with uh, sufficiently small energy barrier. And uh, uh, so, uh, so these are the errors that uh, our decoder must be able to correct. And uh, uh, errors with high energy barrier uh, may potentially uh, confuse the decoder, but we expect that such errors are very unlikely to appear. Uh, and uh, uh, indeed, we can approve uh, well this bound. Uh, so recall that this is our uh, storage error. And uh, uh, we assume that uh, our decoder corrects all errors uh, with energy barrier smaller than some energy cutoff M. <coughs> and uh, the upper bound includes uh, two factors. We have this uh, uh, Boltzmann exponential factor. Uh, and uh, uh, well, it's uh, exponentially, exponentially small in uh, M, uh, energy cutoff, and uh, well, it uh, supports our initial intuition. Uh, but uh, we also have uh, this second uh, entropy factor. Uh, it uh, does not depend on the energy cutoff, and it grows exponentially uh, this N. <coughs> so uh, roughly speaking, this uh, entropy factor uh, uh, keeps track of uh, the number of possible uh, error paths that have given uh, uh, energy cost. <coughs> uh, uh, 
so in order to get rid of this uh, entropy factor, we are, uh, we are, we are forced to, uh, to consider only small systems. For example, if we choose uh, n that defines uh, this bound, then uh, this entropy factor is just upper bounded by a constant, and uh, we get uh, this. Uh, so we only have uh, the Boltzmann factor. Uh, but uh, uh, because uh, there is a prefactor proportional to the system size n, uh, this bound is only useful if uh, our energy cutoff is uh, at least uh, logarithmic in the system size. <coughs> uh, uh, so uh, what we need uh, is to prove that our decoder uh, corrects uh, all errors with uh, uh, energy barrier smaller than some constant times log n. <coughs> And uh, at least we'll have to use uh, this uh, 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 property that uh, the qubit code uh, does not have things like uh, logical operators. Uh, so let me briefly remind you definition of this operator. Uh, <coughs> so, uh, uh, and, uh, so a logical uh, string segment is just a Pauli operator uh, such that, uh, uh, that creates two uh, well-separated clusters of defects uh, from the ground state. <coughs> And uh, uh, the regions enclosing this uh, uh, cluster uh, are called uh, anchors. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, well, we will say that uh, a logical string segment is trivial if uh, its action on the ground state can be uh, uh, reproduced by uh, uh, local operators, which are localized uh, in some constant neighborhood of this uh, anchor region. <coughs> Trivial string uh, segments are not really strings because well, we can cut in string in the middle. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, we will need this uh, no strings rule. Uh, it says that uh, uh, all string segments which are sufficiently switched uh, must be uh, uh, trivial. <coughs> uh, and uh, I can uh, uh, quantify how stretch is a string segment using this aspect ratio. Uh, it's uh, uh, the distance between anchor regions divided by uh, the size of the anchor region. And uh, we demand that uh, there is some uh, constant uh, alpha, uh, such that any logical string segment with uh, aspect ratio greater than alpha must be trivial. Uh, and, uh, well, as, uh, as everyone told us this mo morning, uh, the uh, lit code uh, obeys this uh, no strings rule uh, with uh, well, some small constant alpha. Uh, and uh, uh, well, we also know that uh, no two dimensional stabilizer code can uh, satisfy this uh, property. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, okay. <coughs> uh, and, uh, so, this is our second result. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, if we consider uh, any uh, uh, topological stabilizer code uh, uh, on a, some d-dimensional lattice, uh, uh, and uh, if this code uh, obeys this uh, no strings rule, uh, then uh, <coughs> uh, the uh, RG decoder will correct any uh, error with energy barrier at most uh, C times uh, log L. Such <coughs> and uh, this constant coefficient C depends only on uh, uh, well, special dimension and the constant alpha in the uh, no string rule. <coughs> uh, uh, and uh, well, if we combine this uh, uh, two results together, we have upper bounds on the storage error that includes this uh, uh, Boltzmann exponential Boltzmann factor, and uh, we can choose our energy cutoff as uh, C times local, so we get this uh, 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 polynomial decay. <coughs> Uh, and uh, well, in the remaining five minutes, I will try to sketch uh, the proof of uh, this theorem, uh, which is actually the, the most uh, well, the most difficult results here. <coughs> uh, uh, and uh, uh, well, for simplicity, I will uh, consider uh, uh, I will derive a lower bound on the energy barrier for logical operators, and. Uh <coughs> Uh, of course, if uh, logical operators have small energy barrier, that would be very bad because no decoder can correct logical operators. <coughs> uh, and uh, uh, well, uh, 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 
uh, the proof essentially involves uh, uh, two ideas. Uh, <coughs> uh, the first is that uh, 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 no since rule implies certain uh, 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 localization of error. <coughs> so suppose we have uh, uh, a stream of single qubit errors that implements uh, some logical operators. And suppose we look on some, uh, 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 we restrict this uh, stream uh, of errors onto some uh, time window. Uh, and uh, <coughs> so uh, we have some initial syndrome S, some final syndrome S prime. And we have uh, some long chain of single qubit errors that goes from S to S prime. <coughs> now, uh, uh, if uh, this chain is very long, then uh, the accumulated errors along this uh, path uh, could be a very non-local operator. <coughs> uh, suppose, however, that uh, all uh, intermediate syndromes in this sequence are sparse. Uh, and uh, uh, by sparse, I mean that uh, uh, the distance between any pair of defects uh, is much <coughs> larger than uh, constant alpha in the null since rule. Uh, then, uh, 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 the one way to rephrase the null since rule is to say that uh, local errors cannot move uh, individual defects by distance uh, more than uh, alpha. <coughs> uh, and uh, so it means that if we look on uh, evolution of this syndrome along this path, uh, these defects can uh, uh, can move only uh, a little bit away from the initial location. <coughs> uh, uh, and uh, so we can use these observations to show that uh, we can uh, localize this accumulated error. By what I mean that we can multiply it by a stabilizer such that uh, uh, modified error is supported only on uh, uh, some small neighborhood of uh, the initial and the final syndrome. And th the size of this neighborhood is related to this constant alpha. Mm. Uh, uh, so if all these intermediate syndromes are sparse, it means that uh, uh, accumulated errors actually have a very small weight, maybe after multiplying by stabilizer. Mm. Uh, but we know that our entire path implements some logical operator, which has a uh, very large weight because this is a topological force. Mm. So it means that uh, 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 there must be some intermediate syndromes which are, are not sparse. Uh, and I will call such syndrome dense. <coughs> uh, and uh, well, uh, now uh, comes the, the second idea. Uh, uh, the observation is that this uh, no sphinx rule is actually invariant. Uh, so uh, <coughs> uh, uh, it tells us that if you consider any cluster of defects of size R, uh, such cluster cannot move, uh, cannot be moved by local errors more than distance uh, alpha times r away. <coughs> and uh, uh, so, uh, well, uh, the idea is to use this scale invariance and define uh, sparseness and denseness of syndromes at uh, different uh, special scales. <coughs> uh, uh, and then uh, uh, we show that uh, in order for the uh, accumulated error to have a weight of order uh, lattice size, uh, there must be at least one intermediate syndrome which is dense uh, almost at every intermediate scale. <coughs> uh, and finally, we, we show that uh, if uh, we have a syndrome which is uh, dense at every uh, intermediate, uh, sorry, if it's dense at every special scale, then such syndrome must contain for the log L uh, defect. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't have time to, to get into more details. Uh, so uh, well, let me just conclude by going through this summary of our results. Thank you. So questions? Um, in your decoding algorithm, you say that you, um, you draw a, a box around kind of clusters of syndromes and then mm -hmm. you try and figure out what uh, what Pauli error un, uh, annihilates those uh, yes. those syndromes. Do you do that just by brute force within the box? Do you just try all possible um, uh, Pauli operators within that box? Or uh, 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 they, they actually have much better way of uh, doing that uh, because all these codes are uh, stabilizer codes we can use 